All right, hey everyone, this is Melissa. Um, not quite awake yet, but that's okay. I'm still kind of raw um, from some stuff last night that happened, and I like to share some vulnerability um, when, I, when I'm not as awake and I'm still feeling some stuff. So um, last night I went to a divorce care class, marriage slash class. Um, it's more focused on divorce, but it also talks about rebuilding your marriage and restoration, which is pretty important. Um, when I went to sit down, I just happened to look at my phone and I had a message from my husband's um, nasty aunt, basically. I don't know how else to put it. Um, she only um, sent him a happy birthday wish once in about 50 years. I think actually she's like yeah she's like his great aunt great yeah she's his father's sister so um yeah so i'm like what the heck you know and this is how um things happen to when you're trying to improve yourself or you're trying to work at things a lot of times you have resistance coming up against you so i look at this last night when i get home and i'm like what the heck to myself you know i'm like what why is she trying to friend me on Facebook? So it looks like I'm dealing with the whole entire family who wants to um, battle me in my personal marriage with my husband. So I sent my message, this email, uh, my husband, this email last night. And I'm like, why is your aunt trying to get involved in our marriage? You know, his family has been very... Um, very nosy like i went up to maine once to go to a family reunion because most of his family's from maine and they had this pool party and i kid you not he's got two twin aunts or something okay and they're both like dotting on him like oh ben it's been so long since we've seen you and they're like pouring on the love like you would not believe and i'm thinking Aren't they related to him? What the, what is going on here? So no, it was like huge amount of flirting and uh, lack of boundaries and everything. So um, yeah, I have, I don't really know her. I know once she sent a birthday wish to my husband and then because of whatever his parents told her, she got online and called me a bitch on Facebook basically. I hate to swear because I, I try not to do that. But it is what it is, and that's what she did. So I've got, like, this family ganging up on me, it looks like, in the future, which they already have. Um, most of them have. There are a couple in the family who are Christians and, you know, where we should be one in Christ. Um, so I don't have an issue with them. I've gone to hairdressing school with um, his cousin's wife, and we know each other from that. We know each other from high school, but most of the family is pretty um, rude. So, um, so what I wanted to share was when I'll be sharing more about this divorce care class, um, not the confidentiality because that's private, but just in general. So last night I learned something about myself and it was a really good class and I so appreciate people who know like what you're going through because so many times people do not understand what you're going through and basically um you know they they have this class where they just talk about different circumstances and one of the things that i realized is i don't grieve i don't grieve well i tend to be somebody who just which is a strength in of itself but i just move on i just go on and i just don't take the time to grieve it's almost like a coping mechanism i can sweep things under the rug i was taught to do that i was taught to you know i can be almost in denial about things i can just um i could just do that i think it's a survival technique i think it's just you know move forward let's go i tend to bounce back very easy from trials and I'm thinking to myself, why hasn't this divorce threat bothered me? I mean, I don't know. I, am I just as tough as nails? I think I am. And it doesn't really bother me. Um, I think if I was to sit on this 
for a while, it probably would, but I'm busy with my life and I don't have time to get down with this. And one of the people, somebody said, well, you have to get torn down. You have to let yourself break in order to rebuild. And that was really good, but I'm not there yet. And somebody else had said, like when you're in this class, um, and I think this tr is true, you have to take every bit of advice with a grain of salt. You know, their choices for taking a new path is to talk calmly and with being civil to one another, friendship or remarriage. And you, you can't always do that. I mean, some people are narcissists and abusive. That was not a path that they had talked about. And obviously, when you are going through the beginning of this, you are in a battle. Not only are you in a battle for your marriage, but you're in a battle for someone's soul a lot of times. Not only the soul of your spouse, but the soul of others who are, you know, watching or whatever. So um, that was good for me to at least see that, that I tend to relate that way or cope in life that way. And um, to balance out with like, okay, how much am I willing to allow myself to break to deal with some stuff? And how much am I willing to say, no, I need to survive, take care of myself and not have time for this foolishness. And my husband, I think I tend to go that way. My husband too was just like, you know, he had sent me an email that I'm going to enjoy my life without you. And it's been about a year and I, I'm kind of snarky sometimes and almost wanted to say, so are you enjoying your life now? Because I haven't really been in his life for a year and he's lashing out and saying, you know, basically I can't enjoy my life because you're around and I have to divorce you. So he's been really cruel, extremely cruel. And you know what? You'll be okay if you're a Christian. You will. You've got, you know, Christ in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. You've got the power of the gospel. Christ is risen. We're going to eternity with him. We're going to have the best life ever. And it really doesn't matter in a sense what someone else does to you because they really can't hurt you. I mean, they can't. What can they do if God is for you? Who is against you? So he's really hurting himself. And men who can't love their wives, they hurt themselves because he's lonely. He's in pain. And no matter what he does, I've been through this with him when we used to break up and go out a couple times. No matter what he does, he doesn't have me. So he can fill himself with every single thing he wants and it still won't satisfy. Even another woman, it's not going to satisfy a lifetime together. So he's being really foolish right now. And you just trust God. You just, you know, have the confidence to know that you're the best of the best and, you know, you're not trying to be... Uh, full of yourself but you know it's true and you know that he isn't going to find anything that he had with someone over 31 years of you know marriage and knowing someone so you just got to be confident in yourself and who you are and knowing your strengths and your confidence and don't feel that you have to do anything to get his love um he either gives it freely and if a man doesn't then it's not worth it so that's what i got now ladies